Our next story is from the Philippines. An assassination plot has alarmed the nation. The target is the president, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Now, this would be alarming on its own, knowing that the president's life is under threat. But what's worse is the plotter. It's his own vice president, Sarah Duterte, the daughter of former president Rodrigo Duterte, and the person who will succeed Marcos if he dies. Yes, the vice president of the Philippines has threatened to assassinate the president. And she said this publicly during a press conference on Saturday. She was addressing a question about her own safety. And she said, and I quote, don't worry about my security because I've talked with somebody. I said, if I'm killed, you'll kill BBM, Lisa Araneta and Martin Romualdez. No joke, no joke. This is what she said. Now, BBM stands for Bong Bong Marcos, Marcos, BBM. He often goes by his initials. Lisa Araneta is his wife and the first lady. And Martin Romualdez is the Speaker of the House of Representatives in the Philippines. He's also the president's first cousin. Now, the feud between the Duterte and Marcos families is an old one, but this is a new law. Marcos is not taking the threat lying down. He addressed the Philippines today and he vowed to fight the threat. It's worrying the statements that we heard from the past days. There are numerous expletives and threats, plans to assassinate some of us. That criminal plot should not be allowed to pass. I'll fight it. So how did it come to this? How is the vice president openly making threats against the president and his family? Let me give you some background. The Marcos and Duterte families are major political dynasties in the Philippines. President Marcos' father was also president. In fact, he ruled the country for 21 years. He was considered a dictator. Marcos Sr. was eventually ousted. He fled to the U.S. and he died there in 1989. So his family, including Marcos Jr., became political pariahs for a while. But they slowly returned to politics. Bongbong Bong Marcos Jr. became a provincial governor in 1998. He joined the lower house of Congress in 2007 and then became a senator in 2010. His sister, Aimee Marcos, is a senator. His son, Ferdinand Sandro Marcos III, is a congressman. It's a classic case of dynastic politics. And that is the Marcos clan for you. On the other side, you have the Dutertes. Rodrigo Duterte was the previous president of the Philippines. He served from 2016 to 2022. His daughter, Sarah, is the current vice president, the one who issued the threat. One of our brothers is a congressman. Another is the mayor of Davao City, the family's home turf. So it's another strong political dynasty. These two clans, Marcos and Duterte, came together in the last election. They contested together in 2022. Bongbong Bong Marcos for president, Sarah Duterte for vice president. It was understood that Sarah would succeed Bongbong Bong Marcos in the next election, in 2028, because Bongbong Bong cannot be president again. In the Philippines, you have only one term, one six-year term. Hence the alliance between these dynasties to keep power between themselves. The partnership was wildly successful. They blew away the competition in the 2022 presidential election. It looked like nothing could stop them. But then cracks started to appear. They had differences over China. The Duterte's were seen as soft on China, especially when it came to Beijing's bogus territorial claims in the West Philippine Sea. Former President Rodrigo Duterte reportedly had a gentleman's agreement with Chinese President Xi Jinping. But Marcos Jr., the current president, has taken a different approach. He's outspoken about China's land grabbing. And he has increased cooperation with the U.S., bringing in more American troops to help defend the Philippines. That's one problem area. Another point of contention is a drug war. Rodrigo Duterte started it as president. He mobilized the so-called death squads to kill drug dealers. These were extrajudicial killings. Duterte said they were necessary, but now he's being investigated for them, both by the Filipino police and the International Criminal Court or the ICC. 
As president, he rejected the ICC, but the Marcos administration says they will cooperate with the international court. That's, that's problem number two. Then we have Sarah Duterte. She too is under investigation for corruption, for misusing public funds. In fact, she was being asked about this probe and whether she faced any security threats. And that is when she said she had made arrangements to assassinate President Marcos. And she has told the assassin, and I'm quoting again, if I die, don't stop until you've killed them. This is how the whole situation unfolded. Two political dynasties join hands to come to power and are now at each other's throats. The Marcos clan will make the next move. Sarah Duterte might even end up in jail. And then the Dutertes will hit back. So it seems that this feud will definitely get worse.